Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for coming here to the Aga Khan Museum this Sunday, this rainy Sunday, to attend the Aga Khan Museum's in, uh, anniversary lecture, to listen to the lecture that will be given by Professor um, Mamoun Abdul Karim about heritage and conflict, Syria's battle to save its past. My name is Henry Kim. I'm the director and CEO of the Aga Khan Museum, and I'm very pleased to share this moment with you. As I do not believe that there's been a topic more on our minds in recent years than Syria. Who could have foretold that the conflict that arose from the embers of the Arab Spring in 2011 would still be raging, unresolved, over six years later? As a museum and arts organization, what role can we play? I personally believe that the work that museums do should and must be relevant to the issues of today. They should reflect our times and resonate with the questions that are on top of our minds. Museums can and should be responsive, and I do believe that the Aga Khan Museum has been responsive in addressing the issue about Syria today. In fact, as we were looking at our programs for 2016 last September, we felt that we had to make a quick decision to actually include a season devoted to Syria. Syria is a story that has to be told now, this year, right now, and not wait for 2017, 2018, or any time thereafter. We felt that there was a clear need to create programs that offered our public with a chance to learn more about this remarkable history and artistic heritage of the region, and to understand who are Syrians, both of the past and of the present, Syrians who live in Syria, but also the community of Syrians who now live amongst us in Canada and around the world. Syria, a living history, brings together artifacts and artworks that tell a different story of this country and region. It's one of cultural diversity, historical continuity, resourcefulness, and also resilience. It shows that Syrians are Hittites and Sumerians. They're Greeks and Romans, they're Persians, they're Mamluks, they're Ottomans. They're people who live in Syria of the past, who live there today, who are our neighbors living right next door to us. This exhibition and set of public programs, Syria Living History, is exactly what the Aga Khan Museum stands for. Opened just two years ago, the museum's mission is to connect cultures to the arts, offering our public with windows onto worlds unknown. It is here to inspire cultural dialogues and to promote a better understanding of the other so that we have a much better understanding of our society and world today. Now, to create, to create this exhibition, we had to actually work very quickly to bring together partners who could actually make this exhibition happen. And this exhibition, I'm pleased to say, was organized in just under nine months. And it could not have happened without the, generous, the generosity of our lending institutions, seven international institutions that have lent their objects to this exhibition and made this celebration of Syria's culture and heritage actually, to, to actually make it to, to take place. And I'd like to acknowledge those museums and institutions because their work to do this under a very short time pressure was absolutely amazing. It included the Musée du Louvre in Paris, the Museum of Islamic Art in Berlin, the, Vorto, the Forter Asiatische Museum in Berlin, the Metropolitan Museum in New York, the Royal Ontario Museum here in Toronto, which is actually the largest lender of objects for this exhibition and has a tremendous, ex tremendous collection of Syrian antiquities, the Atassi Foundation of Dubai, and also Marilyn Marshall Wolf collectors here in Toronto. Now, I'd also like to acknowledge another partner, and that is UNESCO. UNESCO, both the Canadian Commission and also the International Organization of UNESCO, has very generously extended its patronage to this exhibition. And their support on the national and international level has been absolutely magnificent. At this moment, 
I'd like to invite the president of the Canadian Commission for UNESCO, Professor Christina Cameron, to say a few words. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Director Kim, I want to thank you for including me here today. And the staff of the Aga Khan Museum uh, are to be congratulated on this extraordinary cultural event and on the rapidity of producing this exhibit. It's really quite astounding. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge the contribution of some of the international partners from the UNESCO side, and that would be the Director General of UNESCO herself, Irina Bokova, and Mr. Francesco Banderin, who is the Assistant Director General for Culture. And of course, despite the current situation in Syria, we have the Director General of Antiquities with us, Mr. Mamoum Abdul Karim. And we want to thank you for your efforts in this very difficult situation. The Canadian Commission for UNESCO is really pleased to be a patron of Syria, a living history. And I'm really honored to participate today. I should say that uh, I, this is not my first visit to the museum. We came with my family and my grandchildren, children and grandchildren, last winter, and we were really impressed with the exhibits and with the beautiful architecture. And we had lots of discussion after, which, which proves that the Aga Khan Museum is, it has something for everybody of all ages. I was very impressed with that. So thank you for that. The Canadian Commission for UNESCO values the museum's leadership in showcasing the culture of Syria, whose 5,000 years of heritage is under threat, as we know. And this initiative really reflects one of UNESCO's mandates, which is the preservation of cultural heritage. UNESCO, or the United Nations Educational, um, Ed Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization, was created in 1945 in the wake of the Second World War and its horrors. This was done because while political and economic agreements help, they aren't enough to secure lasting peace. Peace cannot be established on paper alone. It also depends on moral and intellectual solidarity among people. It is worth recalling that the first act of, in the UNESCO Constitution, the first article says, since wars begin in the minds of men and women, it is in the minds of men and women that the defenses of peace must be constructed. So celebrating and valuing the cultural heritage of Syria with international uh, audiences belongs to that peace process, to the real DNA of UNESCO. UNESCO cares about preserving cultural heritage because it lies at the root of human identity and fosters intercultural dialogue. That is, to recognize and safeguard cultural heritage is to recognize and safeguard cultural identity and diversity. We grieve when artifacts, buildings, and other examples of cultural heritage are destroyed because such destruction is an attack on our own humanity. This destruction hurts us all because we see our collective humanity and collective heritage in the culture of others. Human beings are attached to their own tangible culture and the tangible culture of others because they celebrate our achievements and our memories. When our cultures are valued, we feel valued. When we feel valued, we're likely to value others, which in turn leads to more peaceful outcomes and greater cooperation. Today, we're called on to reaffirm the values of UNESCO. UNESCO is more relevant than ever, and do what we can to prevent the loss of cultural heritage, but also to celebrate that heritage, as the Aga Khan Museum is doing this month. And now, I'd like to pass the torch, in a way, to the Director General of UNESCO, Irina Bokova, who has recorded a brief statement on this occasion, which I'd like to share with you. She has some very insightful things to say about the state of the tangible cultural heritage in Syria during this time of conflict. And she has been a real leader and a, a voice of solidarity to the Syrian people. She also speaks about the role of UNESCO and the Syrian people's efforts in preserving their heritage from further destruction. 
I hope that her words will offer you some hope for ser serious, irreplaceable cultural heritage. Une fois de plus, j'aimerais remercier le Musée Aga Khan, ses donateurs et ses partenaires pour la réalisation de cet impressionnant événement et cette exposition. And now, I think the video. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply honored to participate in opening this exhibition, Syria, a Living History at the Agahan Museum, and to introduce my dear friend, Dr. Mamun Abdul Karim, the Director General of Antiquities in Syria. We see today in Syria unimaginable human loss and the deliberate destruction of unique cultural heritage and diversity. All six of Syria's World Heritage properties are damaged. 60% of the old city of Aleppo is destroyed. Countless archaeological sites are looted. Last April, I sent a rapid assessment mission to Palmyra, confirming its museum has suffered heavy damage and the temples of Bel, Baal Shamin, and the Ark of Triumph had been destroyed. No one knows better these challenges than Dr. Abdul Karim. In the most dire circumstances, the Directorate General for Antiquities and Museums has worked tirelessly to protect Syria's cultural heritage and to mobilize the international community. UNESCO is answering this call. We are leading forward the United Nations Security Council resolution 2199 to impose a global moratorium on trade in illegally exported artifacts from Iraq and Syria. We are working with partners to end the financing of terrorism through illicit trafficking. We have adopted an emergency action plan for Syria to mitigate damage, evacuate thousands of threatened objects and plan for recovery. The UNESCO office in Beirut is training Syrian professionals in documentation, archiving, damage assessment, and emergency interventions through a EU-funded projects with the support of the governments of Flanders and Austria. In this context, the message of this exhibition could not be more important. Serious cultural heritage dates back thousands of years. This is a history of constant exchange, diversity and resilience. This is a history that carries special meaning for every Syrian woman and man, and that belongs to all of us, that is woven into the history we all share as a single humanity. We must protect this past to build a better future for all. In this spirit, I thank again the Agahan Museum and all partners engaged in this unique exhibition. We must stand up for the cultural heritage and diversity of Syria, because this is standing up to the humanity we all share. Thank you. Professor Cameron, thank, and thank you very much. And I think it's much appreciated the words from the Secretary General, uh, Irina Bakova. Now at this point, I'd like to introduce Louis Monreal, the General Manager for the Aga Khan Trust for Culture, who will introduce our guest lecturer for today. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Normally, when you introduce a speaker, which has a very important, and is the case, uh, scholarly and academic background, you start by his curricula vitae. But this is not going to be the case today. I'm going to be very indiscreet, and Mamoun Abdel Karim, you will, please, you will forgive me for that. 
Let's start by saying that according to the United Nations data, 400,000 people have been killed in Syria since the beginning of the hostilities. 11 million people have been displaced. They've lost their homes, and many of them have been exiled. The economy of the country and the infrastructures are devastated. Cultural heritage has been severely damaged in many areas of the country. It is a humanitarian catastrophe. Today, Mamoun Abdel Karim is going to talk about cultural heritage. And you may wonder, the journalist outside, the public opinion may wonder why cultural heritage is important in the context of this humanitarian catastrophe. Cultural heritage is particularly important because it's our roots of identity, because it's a record of the past that justifies the dignity of the present. It is also an economic asset for the future, for future generations. And in particular, in Syria, cultural heritage is important because it's the expression of a pluralism, a social pluralism that dates many thousand years back is the witness of societies which were plural and they lived together in harmony. Mamoun Abdel Karim is the man that has undertaken on his shoulders the gigantic task to protect and salvage the rich cultural heritage of his, his country in this context of war. I would like, as I said, to be indiscreet. I'm not going to tell about the man, not about his scholarly background. He is an Armenian and Kurdish by genealogy. He embodies, in that respect, the cultural and ethnic diversity of which Syrian people were once so proud. He's a university professor in classical archaeology, and his wife is also a professor, and again, a case of pluralism in Christian archaeology. He became, in this critical position of Director General of Museums and Antiquities, by accident. In fact, he didn't want the job, he refused it, but he was obliged to take it in August 2002. And he took the job with the proviso that he will be only there for six months. He's still there. Of course, his pretension to do the job in six months was excessive. It was excessive because Syria has 34, 34 museums, public museums, 10,000 cultural sites. Syria is one of the richest cultural heritage nations in the world. When he started his job, he took what I think there are three clear intelligent decisions. First of all, he closed all museums. Second, he salvaged the collections to moving them to safe places. And third, last but not least, he appointed people responsible for the continued safeguarding of cultural heritage in all regions of the country. He will speak about that, but let me give you an example. He has relatives, family relatives in the north, which is an area uh, occupied by the opposition and outside the government's control. And then, using his family connections, he appointed uh, representatives to protect the heritage there. He protected also uh, representatives in the east of the country, also in areas outside government control. And he managed to pay their monthly salaries from government's money. This is something that I think in war, in war situations, not many people will have achieved. His decisions are rooted, and they are successful because they are rooted in great pragmatism. He had the nightmare in mind of the looting of the National Museum in Baghdad, in Iraq, in the early 2000s, and he didn't want these things to happen in, the, in his country. But how people look at Mamun Abdel Karim? I think the people who know him and those who do not, do not know him even, they look at him as a highly respected cultural heritage specialist, and this independently if they are on the side of the government or in the side of the opposition. He is, in fact, a neutral agent, 
a mediator between the parties. He will give us, in a few minutes, because I'm finishing, don't worry, he will give you immediately his fascinating account of the gigantic task that he has undertaken. He is the Syrian monuments man. And I must tell you that when the film was, uh, was had its premiere in Paris, um, George Clooney wanted to have Mamoun Abdel Karim with him as the contemporary monuments man. But unfortunately, he could not get a permit to travel outside Syria at that time, so he had to stay at home. We have in AKTC, the Aga Khan Trust for Culture, we have the privilege to work with the Department of Museums and Archaeology in Syria for 20 years. We've been working in many sites that they are today damaged, and in some cases seriously damaged by the hostilities, like the Crac de Chevalier or Aleppo. But I can assure you that as soon as the conditions will enable it, we were going to come back to Syria. And in particular, I would like to tell you that we are designing under the aegis of UNESCO and under the UNESCO campaign for Palmyra with Professor Mamoun Abdel Karim, an ambitious program to rehabilitate the Palmyra Museum. To rehabilitate this museum in the context of the site of Palmyra is important because you need to put also not only conservation, but socio-economic stimulus in a community and the bringing in resources, job opportunities, and money to rebuild the Museum of Palmyra, well, that could be one of the incentives to repopulate this devastated city. Mamoun, before you start to speak, one has say, first of all, the admiration we have for you, for your courageous, intelligent approach to this problem, for the great sacrifice, personal sacrifice that you've made for the example of humanity and altruism that you are giving every day. You are, to all of us, a hope for a better future for Syria. Syria, which has been the cradle of the civilization and a very creative actor in the process of human development. Thank you, Mamoun, for having the effort to travel so far. Mamoun doesn't like to catch planes, and I'm sure that you are going to give a fascinating lecture. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, dear Luis Moyal, dear Rekim, dear all colleagues in the Museum of Aga Khan to invite me. This invitation it is very beautiful for me that give me some feeling that I am not alone in Syria. Because we lived in tragedy through all the times, four years ago, as Director General, what you said exactly, it is by accident I became Director General of Antiquity because my life was very beautiful before as Director of the Department of the Archaeology. But in summer 2012, my colleague, my friend, Director of the Department of the French Literature, became Minister of the Cultural. She asked me, Professor, we need you. Because already before, in 2003, when Baghdad lived the tragedy in the Museum of Baghdad, you worked in Director General as Director of the Museum's Affairs. I refused it. Because the life, it was tragic. How I can protect? It is responsibility. 10,000 sites, also 34 museums. What we can do? The mass leave it in crisis. A lot of the clashes in Damascus. The Minister of the Defense, many general killed in Damascus in this period, in these weeks. Damascus it was in, under risk. All kinds of the risk we had in Damascus. Madame Minister of the Culture refused my refuse. She said to me, what you can do? Do you refuse for the political reason? I said, no, I never had political position. 
I am professor. When I teach with my students, they are my children. I never asked if you are Kurdish, Armenian, Christian, Muslim, Arab. For me, the politics is another thing. It's not my job. My job, I choose it to be professor in archaeology. I teach. She said to me, okay, you can, uh, we can sing letters. 24 years later, they asked me by telephone, Director General, Mr. Director General, you can go to your office. office. I surprised it. Madam, what happened? She said to me, my responsibility is finished. I nominated you. Now it is your responsibility. Do you defend your heritage or no? It's your responsibility. <laughs> it was crisis, crazy today with my small two children. I talked with my wife and my children. Two small children in this period. Six, nine. What we can do? Finally, I asked it if you can go outside of the Syria, but I should to stay. We have the risk about all the museums in Syria. My family, my wife, my two small children refused to leave me. They asked me, we should to stay with you. You can do what you want. Really, we leave it in tragedy. We were condemned, I remember. Quickly, in 2012, I was condemned by a lot of the colleagues in the world because I accepted this job, because it is public. Of course it is public. How I can protect Syrian heritage without work in this directorate? It's not private. In all the countries in the world, Directorate General of the Antiquity and Museum is public, but we continue it. What my colleague, my friend Luis said, it was necessary 10 days later to close all the museums, including the National Museum of Damascus, to hide all the objects in safe places in each area. Slowly, slowly, in 2015, I changed the strategy when what happened in Palmyra, we transported by all ways, by my colleagues, more 300,000 objects in all the museums to safe places in Damascus. We documented, I can give you some pictures, what happened, it was necessary to save cultural heritage inside of the museums. But how we can save 10,000 sites in all the Syria. It was necessary to work with local community. We asked all the Syrian authorities to help me. It is not just my job. It is the job of each ministry in Syria. But also, if the government is not here, it is the job of the local community. It is in honor of our mothers. We should work together. 2,500 persons working still now with me in both sides an area under control of the government and also an area under control of the opposition. I can give you an example. Bosra city from the Roman period is one of the beautiful cities in the world, it's world heritage. When the government lost in March 2015, two, three days later, I nominated new director of the antiquities. We saved the collection inside of the citadel, we, they clean it, we continue the work. It is my beautiful hope that all Syrian people accepted my job through all the tragedy. I describe it myself through all the media. That is, I am the saddest director general in the world. It's my reality. Never I was happy four years ago. What happened? Each day, because I am the first man in Syria who received the bad news each day about the destruction. What happened? in all the sides. But sometimes also I am happy when I receive a beautiful message. When I receive in the middle of the night through the WhatsApp, my guards in the borders with the Turkey, an area under control of the opposition, my guards sent me by WhatsApp the news. Professor, what happened? What we can do? It's my proud. I am proud that these people, I work with them. They are hero. So these people, who lives all in Syria and all the kind of the tragedy, imaginable lives, but they stayed in their country areas and continue to work with us in the Directorate General of Antiquities. Of course, through what we had, what we wanted from the international community, it was something 
to help us. Not money. Never I asked the money. I asked all the time some feeling, some warm feeling to contact us. If we are in the life or we died. Because the isolation was very cold for all staff, what we work together in Damascus. Fortunately, 2014, the world changed with us. Through the rule, fundamental of the UNESCO, especially the rule of the Madame Irina Bokova and the staff of the UNESCO, they do it a lot of the support to us, to contact us. You should to stay here. We are with you, ECOMOS, ECOM, ECOM, Aga Khan, and also Interpol, hundreds of the universities and institute helped me through the contact. Through some emails, what you need, we are here, you are fine, etc. Some message, it was good for us to have the resistance to stay in Syria. Fortunately, we stayed. Fortunately, we decided to stay in Syria. Fortunately, we refused to leave the Syria and to do what we can do. It was good just before to give you some uh, not beautiful image, very bad image about what happened in Syria, what the kind of the destruction, what happened, just what we save it, about 99% of the collection in all the museums in Syria. It is good news for us. We protected more 90% of the sites, anti-traffic through the local community. How many people, some in some village, cities, helped us, they defended their sites in Syria. In general, is good. Our vision, what I presented you, some our visions, the more important for me, it was do not use our ethics for the political reasons. If we are different in the views in the politics, it is another thing. My hope to push all Syrian people together, to work together, without any difference in the politics. Because the politics change, the governments change, the life continues, but all the destruction on the cultural heritage will stay for the generation, generation. I asked my colleagues, be careful. It is very necessary by destiny, by the destiny we are archaeologists today. We are in Syria. Do not forget that one day in the future our children will be attacked us if we refuse to help Syrian heritage today. Just to not be condemned by small children in the future because it is our destiny by the bad situation. We live it today as professor. For me, if you asked me, do you want it to live now? I can give you my hope it was to live before 20, 30 years ago. Do not live this moment in Syria because it is very tragic period. Protecting of the whole in the Syrian, urging of the Syrian people to work together. So this vision in general, what you can look in this uh, uh, page, we push it Syrian people to work together through this crisis. How many kind of the clash, uh, destruction we have? Not one. All the people in the world, what we know, it was we started by clashes. Many site cities, historical cities and citadels became battlefield. We appeal it. We push it all the time, do not use our cultural heritage for the war. But it is not my, uh, I haven't the power to stop this war. You know how many Syrian crises became very difficult. My rule, just to appeal, do not use our cultural heritage sites as battlefield, like Aleppo. Aleppo today became the symbol of the tragedy of the cultural heritage in Syria. Each day we have new destruction. If the situation continues in Aleppo, I am sure that Aleppo will become like, like Warsaw in 1944. And it is the city of the Aleppo more 150 building, historical building damage it. Of course, different levels, heavy, middle, small. Thousands, thousands of the market black burn it. Hundreds of the houses, traditional houses from the 19th century and 18th century, 20th century, damage it. It is one of the most tragic situation today, what we live it in Syria. When I visited Palmyra after the liberation, my heart, it was not in Palmyra. My heart, it was in this moment, it was in Aleppo. What happened in Aleppo? 
We can do something for the Palmyra, so all the partners in the world directed by UNESCO, Aga Khan and other partners, but Alipo, how we can start? It is a challenge for us, for the futures. This image presents you before and after how many, how many destruction around of this citadel. This citadel documented and uh, developed by cooperation with our Director General of Antiquity and Aga Khan 10 years ago. Unfortunately, you see how many damage we have around of the citadel. The great mosque of the Umayyad, it is example of our tragedy in Aleppo. It is around of the citadel. Fortunately, still now, in citadel, inside of the citadel is good. It is under control, fortunately. It is market, uh, ancient market in the old city. Thousands like this burn it. It's tragedy of our cultural heritage, like this mosque, church, mosque, temple, all kind of this site attack it. This church in Homs, another city, attack it. Fortunately, now it is restored. It's in good situation today. In Homs city, in Crac de Chevalier and Malula, it's a city, Christian city around the Damascus, damaged it heavily, this uh, town. And Crac de Chevalier in 2014, I can give you some image. We restored some party of this citadel letters. It is Crac de Chevalier, one of the world heritage citadel in the world. It's Malula. How many damage is this Christian town around of Damascus? World heritage in the north is Syria, 700 village from the dead city uh, where I directed this mission. I am director, co-director of this French Syrian mission since 15 years ago. We worked how many destruction we have in this city. And another kind of the damage, it is not just clashes. It is illegal excavation. excavation. Hundreds of the sites with the absence of the Syrian archaeological authorities in some area very far, we have in the good power of the local community, these sites attacked by mafia in cooperation with local theft. Julia and Joey, we try it to do the best. It is the map how many sites attacked by mafia, but some uh, sites among them, it's is very important sites. Three days. The phenomenon of the looting, it is not new. It's not a relation in the crisis. It has existed before also in all the countries. But before, it was in the night. Through the crisis, it became day, through the day and the night. It is city of the Apamia, from the Hellenistic Roman Byzantine period, attacked by thousands like this, sort of two years ago. They use it also bulldozer to make the looting some area. It is under control of the ISIS. It is Ebla city. It is one of the most important sites in Syria. Attack it. But through the local community, we stop it, this phenomenon. We push the people because it's not under control of the government. This site, Ebla, it's under control of the opposition army. But through our colleagues, Working in this area, the local community will stop it, the phenomenon of the looting in these sites. Palmyra, how they attacked the tombs in Palmyra just to attack all what they can found as these statues to, to make the looting. This man, through the day, he makes the looting in the south of the Syria. It's new phenomenon from through this crisis. It's never existed. Existed small groups, some persons, some times, but not like this phenomenon. This site, Dura Oropos, since 1922, the execution, execution started, but through some months, you look this, they finished all the lootings. They attacked this city from the Hellenistic Roman period. It is another site, Mary, one of the most beautiful sites in Syria from 3rd millennium BC, attacked more 60%, 70%. It's attacked by looting. 
And finally, we have another kind of the destruction. It is ideological. We started by clashes in 2012, 13. L looting started in 2013. I appeal it, I publish it, appeal through all the international community to help us. We received a lot of the reports, how many persons entered in Syria to examine some sites. Please, we need your help in 2013. But any person accepted my appeal in this period. One year later in 2014, we published all the, what we had as a report about the looting in the cultural it is Syria. But in 2014 started a third phenomenon. It is the phenomenon of the ISIS, the ideological reasons. Palmyra, we took this image 18 May 2015, three days before the occupation of the Palmyra by ISIS. Temple Bell, what you know, one of the most beautiful icon of the architect in the Middle East. How they destroyed this uh, temple. Finally, after the liberation, we visited this site, what happened. The reality in the situation, total destruction. We are not so bad in the situation because we know that we examine it by all the engineers, about 30 engineers from my directorate and architect. We found that that good party of the students can be reused in the restoration. But how we can restore? How many restoration? What's the philosophy of the restoration? It will be under the umbrella of the UNESCO in the next times. Uh, I appealed my colleague, architect from the France, three days after the liberation, to come to Syria, if Obelman from the Econium Society of the 3D. Three days later, he was with me in Palmyra. We do it a lot of the 3D about all the buildings. So three, four weeks, we do it a lot of the work. Like this, how many percent damage it, what is the kind of damage, it's because it helps us for the future. How many students percent of the students can be used it? We analyze it all things six months after the liberation in this year. Look also. Another kind of the destruction, it's Temple Bal Shamin, also attacked by this destruction. It's ideological. The reality in the situation, it is tragic image what you have. But also, I can, I can go, give you confirmation that some party from this temple can be restored through the same uh, stones. Because before the liberation, we hadn't any image to confirm how many percent of the destruction we have. We thought that it is, became all like powder. When we visited after the liberation, after the March, 27 March, we found that good party of the stones can be reused for some What's the kind of the rehabilitation, how many percent, etc. It's kind. It's the work of another staff, engineers, experts, etc. Also, through so all the image of the Andron and 3D, we work it. Looks, this image can give you a lot of the information about how many a good party of the students still now in good situation. This is more bad situation in Syria. It is completely they destroy it. I think it will be the bad situation for the future. We can not do big things about this. It is triumphal arc and other, it's very famous triumphal arc destroyed by ISIS. The situation also that this uh, arc also arch can be restored, but three building, it is, and uh, together it will be presented in same project together with UNESCO for many times later. The more important for us, before to restore, now we are, we are looking to finish all documentation, assessment, and analyze all things, now what we do. But to restore, we are not very uh, uh, quick for that, uh, because it is shame to start this project of the restoration now, before to restore the life of the people in Palmyra. We should to convince the people in Palmyra to come back through the life of these people, when they return to the city, we can present some new projects in the future. When the peace comes, you know our colleague Khalil Assad, uh, 82 years, they killed him for terrorist reasons. 15 persons we 
lost through this crisis. Four persons like Khalid Asad beheaded by ISIS. It is uh, something new project of 3D, what we finished all things in this year with French society. It is uh, very beautiful. It is one of the most beautiful tombs. Uh, the name of this uh, tomb is Three Brother. It is damaged, but not so explosive. Fortunately, but because they use it as office. As office. Fortunately, because it was one of the most challenge for us. What happened for this uh, office? We found that, that they use it as hotel. You look this, uh, they, it is like hotel for them. They cover it something. They lift some decoration. It's good in general, but we need the specialists from the best countries to help us in the future how we can to restore this kind of the painting. It is a situation like this. Fortunately, it is used as hotel. It is tombs, the re reality of the tombs destroyed. It is very bad, unfortunately. Before the coming of the ISIS, three hours, we decided to, we finished it already, but it was not possible for us one, two weeks before through the clashes to move all the collection to Damascus. Three hours before the occupation of the ISIS, we transported 400 like this. Hundreds, hundreds, thousands of the ceramic glasses, textile, etc., icon, coins, we transported to Damascus before the coming of the ISIS. I can give you confirmation that more 95% of the collection in National Museum of Palmyra in good situation. It's not damaged. It is not, it is not uh, saved. We have, we have some big uh, funerary banquet. It was not possible to save in last minutes. Uh, through all the tragedy of the transportation, etc., they attacked something. But we surprised it also when we visited Palmyra. Of course, this Leon of Temple Bell, uh, uh, lat, in uh, its push it. Six months before the liberation, I had all the information that this statue it is not completely destroyed. But I never published it through the media. For me, it was necessary to keep this information that to not be make the provocation with these terrorists of the ISIS. Uh, I surprised it, of course, through the witness coming for me from the Palmyra that this statue, it is just push it, broken. Already it was uh, restored before, 10 years before. And now this statue in Damascus, we will start in last of this year, the program under control of the UNESCO, supported by European Union, the restoration of this a statue and another statue, what can I give you some image? It is the reality of the situation after the liberation. Uh, we, I appeal it, the man who restored this statue in Poland, Warsaw. One week later of the liberation, he came to Damascus. We visited together Palmyra. He uh, helped us with his team through two, three weeks because it was necessary for us to make all the assessment before to move any things. But before to move any things also, it was necessary to ask the French architect to come to make the 3D image on site of the museum before to move any things for the future, for the history. The man who restored Bartos, the man who restored this uh, 10 years before, now all things in Damascus we transported. The reality, after the liberation, we found it, our museums, a lot of the big statue, uh, broken, etc. But the good part of what broken can be restored. Why? I can give you this image. It's 3D, 3D image, do it by our colleague, uh, Yves Obelman, architect from the 3D, because it was necessary to document all things in details for the futures, before to move any things. Now we clean it, we finish it all things. It's 3D image for three, four uh, uh, cells, holes in the National Museum of Palmyra, the kind of the damage, uh, sometimes it's just a uh, wall, etc. Good part of these statues can be reused because 
we found it all the kind of the heads like this, just defigure it. The figure is here, like this, like this. Fortunately, good party of what destroyed by ISIS can be restored in the future. Look, this image can give you. Fortunately, what happened in Palmyra, it's not like Muslim Museum that they destroyed completely. In Palmyra, we had some chance that for ignorant, for barbaric reasons, attacked something quickly. But uh, for them, it was not necessary to find this. They tried by all the ways to have two ton of the gold in the museum. We never found in Palmyra two ton gold. We have 200 gram, perhaps 200, but never one kilo we have. Finally, they accepted this idea that we haven't gold in National Museum of Palmyra. This uh, image, looks this, also can be just broken, not destroyed completely. Some image, all the mosaic, it's very strong, um, consolidated in the walls. It was not possible to move, but fortunately, the majority of the mosaic didn't damage it. All kind, it is this image kind, I can give you the example. All these heads still now remain in the count of the museum. We transported to Damascus. We will start the project in this year, project of the restoration of what uh, happened in Palmyra Museum. All the heads not completely destroyed. Our colleague from the Poland, with my colleagues, they tried to save all the mosaic to transport to Damascus in uh, April 2016. My colleagues, about 30 person, leave it two months in bad situation in Palmyra just to finish all things inside of the Museum of Palmyra. What we had in storage stayed as it is because it's not gold. We finished all this work in this year. Now it's cleaned all these statues already in Damascus. We have all things we transported, it's finished. Now it is Damascus image of what we had as statues, it will be restored in this program, sign it between us and Warsaw University because they are specialists about this kind of the work under umbrella of the UNESCO. My staff, when we visited in last April 2016, what for the museums I said you, how many percent it saved it, we are lucky. 13,000 objects from the Museum of the Razor, including 16,000 of the cuneiform tablet, already in Damascus, documented. New photography, we make it more 2,000, 15,000, 50,000 new pictures. All new packing, all new documentation through my colleagues in 2014, 15, and 16. This Museum of the Music is a very beautiful museum. It's new image coming from area under control of the opposition army, but the local community still now in contact with me, they keep it the control on the, this museum and they keep it all the mosaic in this uh, museum. Idlib area, another kind, because it is occupied by some Islamic groups. Directly we contacted the people in this site, how they can, the people and all the elites, tribal, religion, and cultural to help to play the role of the intermediary, to neutralize the museum and our safe, safe places inside of the, this city. It was still now, after one year, six months, the situation continued very good. Uh, the kind, four ton, all the kind of this system uh, to close all the museum, especially in Damascus, you can never to enter in the museums. We make it all the news, documenting like this and packing 300,000 with new packing, new documentation, we do with this work. My staff underground of the National Museum, they work, they restore, they document all things because we don't know how many times we can live in that war. It was this is to make something, do not repeat what happened in Beirut Museum. After 15 years of the civil war in Beirut, they lost a lot by humidity, by another things, another kind of the destruction. The storage, the kind of our storage, when we finished, we sent all this in the 
with the storage very smart, very controlled by all the camera, etc. And documenting, I said you how many documenting we, uh, we do it. We published a new book this year, this book in English and Arabic. It is, you can find in, DG, in um, PDF, in, publish it in our sites, DJM. And what it was very necessary for me after the closing of the museum to make this company in Syria. Company, the Syria is my patri. To publish hundreds of this kind of the image, kind of this image on the citadel, in the gates, in the roots, etc., with beautiful sentence to push the people from driver of the cars to professor university, the same level, to be direct, to push the Syrian people to help me. It was nice through this kind of the raising awareness and conferences and also media and video, etc. It was good that we pushed the Syrian people together to work together. This kind of the local community, what local community do it? It is fantastic mosaic. We found it from Damascus. We haven't a lot of the music from the Damascus area. The people in this village around of Damascus appealed us. We found this mosaic. Some mafia proposed it between one, two million dollars. But we refused it, professor. But professor, you have 24 years, 24 hours to move this mosaic because uh, some group's army refused it to contact. But we accepted to have this occasion. So through the intermediate of the local committee, we sent our staff in area under control of the group's army, we transported this mosaic, and this mosaic now in Citadel of Damascus, we restore it. We make a training for the Damascus University student also. It was beautiful cooperation between us, but it's not, it's an example. I have hundreds of the kind of the cooperation with the local committee. When the army, police, not here, the local committee played the role of the good guard to protect the Syrian heritage in their area. Some months before letters, these people in this village, when they found it through the television, we published all the results of our cooperation. They said to me, Professor, we found it new things, all these things, because you keep it our mosaic, you do it good work about this mosaic, we launch it good information about the media, about where our rule, now we can be honest with you to send, rescind you another party of this collection. All this collection coming from this area under control of the group's army beside of Damascus, the Badani, Burhalaya, through so very difficult area. My colleagues said, said me, Professor, how you can send us seven persons to go in this village? It's not under control of the government. Perhaps they will kill it, kill us. I confirm it to them. If you want, I can give. I can come with you. Finally, they accept it. It is very beautiful what we do it between us and local community. Like this also, confiscation, 7,000, more 7,000 objects stopped by Syrian police and custom through the crisis. Of course, we have good party also, it's fake. What happened now in 2015-16? More 70% of the collection from the sites from the illicit, from uh, looting, it's not original. Now, it's a very high level of the fake what we have now in market black outside of the Syria. All the confiscation, also the kind of the confiscation, a lot of these uh, 7,000. Uh, our uh, cooperation with this city, Busra, what I said before, what happened in Busra, when the government was absent, my staff now, in this last year, in this 2015, they clean it, they protected all the statues inside of the citadel. Still now we paid the money for all sites in Syria, for all the staff, 2,500 persons. Do not forget that more 300 employees in my directorate, they are already my former students. They are like my sons, my children. Some project also to clean and to restore what happened in some we started also the program of the restoration in 2014-2015, quickly. This mosque in Homs now under restoration. And we finished this beautiful building 
from Ottoman period. It is Museum of the Folkloric in Homs. We already finished it. Uh, restoration of this uh, building in Homs city. And uh, what I said before also, what happened through the cooperation with all the kind of the people, uh, what will surprise it, we stop it, not stop it, we discover it. 1,600 silver coins from the Roman period, and now we recuperate in National Museum of Damascus. We make it a lot of the training. This, our friend Jacques Sini is one of the most important architects. And last June, came to Damascus and make it uh, training for my architects in my, this kind in Roberto Nardi in Italy. He received a lot of my colleagues to make the training for the mosaic. A lot of the university, this, they are my uh, group of the uh, uh, friends. Uh, when the facet of the mosaic of the museum, uh, uh, the mosque of Damascus, uh, Umayyad, attacked by mortars, we restored it quickly. Through our work, we found it, new mosaic covered since one century. We discovered this mosaic. My colleagues through all this difficult, warm area, etc. they restored it all. And very, if you have the time in the future to come to Syria, you will be surprised with this beautiful mosaic, discover it after one century, but discover it through the crisis, not before the crisis. How my colleagues worked all time, we give it a lot of the opportunity for the Damascus University to come in our, to join us to make the training, etc. And a lot of, we publish it with ICOM, this very quickly, this uh, green uh, read list of the, our, uh, one of the most important from the ECOMOS, they do it training with my colleague in 2013, because UNESCO, ECOMOS, ECROM, ECOM, they do it excellent work through this crisis with us. They never accepted to leave us. It is good, because it's through this what we need to push another countries, another people in the world. We should to be all time to separate the politics from the cultural. Cultural, it's our world. It is our common cultural. It is our common heritage. Thank for all the staffs do it a lot of the work to help it us through this. Uh, uh, crisis, and of course you know this resolution through the effort do it by UNESCO and us and another partners that UN adopted this resolution. What we need today to have real application of this resolution in the field, and also what you see here, the list some partners like Aga Khan who worked a lot of the work before the crisis, and Aga Khan, I thank Aga Khan that they refused to close the gate of the Aga Khan in Damascus. We are proud, like German Institute of the Archaeology also refused to close their institute in Damascus. And I think today Aga Khan for the culture in Damascus do it some good uh, works through the restoration. We hope to have in the future a lot of the cooperation, Luis Morial, he is now the lead, the lead of new cooperation about the Palmyra Museum, how Aga Khan can be involved with UNESCO, with Hermitage and other partners in the world, how they can help us through the Palmyra Museum, to restore the museum, and perhaps to rebuild new museum also in Palmyra, because finally, I can give you, I am sure that we can rebuild two museums through what we have still now as collection of the Palmyra. I cannot stay more through my English, new English, small English. I try to be clear. I hope that I give it some clear ideas through my very new English since two years ago. I learned with journalists in my office. Thank you very much.
On behalf of the museum and the board of directors of the Aga Khan Museum, I'd like to thank you so very much, Professor Abdul Karim, for this unbelievable lecture that you've given us this Sunday afternoon. I think what you've been able to show us is not only the amount of work and the de dedication that's being done by yourself and your professional colleagues in Syria to protect, document, pr to preserve cultural heritage, I think you've also signaled the importance of why culture does matter. It knits communities together. It's going to be essential for the reconstruction of communities in war-torn regions. It is actually something that does bind people and unite people across the world. And I think that one of the most amazing things about your lecture today, Professor Abdul Karim, is how you have now made this visible to people who may not have heard the stories of what's actually happening on the ground. It's done by dedicated people, it's done by professionals, it's done by volunteers, it's done by people who are today's monuments men. And I have to say that more than anything else, it comes down to the leadership of one individual, Mamun Abdul Karim. You have helped to make this happen. And I think that in terms of the work that's been done to preserve cultural heritage, this is one of the most amazing stories any of us have ever heard in our lifetimes. And so I have to just say again, thank you very much. And I have to say one more standing round of ovation. <laughs> and now, I'd like to bring today's lecture to a close. Again, thanking Dr. Abdul Karim, thanking our sponsors, our patrons, and everyone who's helped to make this lecture and this program happen. To Louis Monreal, who has been supportive and has really helped make things happen for us, both for the exhibition and our programs. You know, this is a collaborative effort, and to be able to bring to Canada, to North America and the world, the cultural heritage of Syria this year in 2016 is, I think, one of the most important public messages that can be delivered in our time. Now, at this point, um, Professor Abdul Karim will be available to meet with people in our lobby. Uh, for our patrons and donors, we do have a reception afterwards as well. But uh, this is, has been an, a thoroughly enlightening afternoon on a, on, a, on a dark and cloudy day. But I have to say, despite the gloom that you may feel in terms of the destruction of cultural heritage, the light that we see is that the work is being done to preserve, to document, to restore. And it's not the work that's only going to be, that's going to take just a few years to complete. This is generational. This is multi-generational. But I think most important, it's not going to be done by Syrians alone. You will have help from throughout the world. And I think all of us in this audience can support that in some way. So thank you very much. <laughs>